In this video I will show you how you can use Kramer's rule to solve a system of equations. Let's assume you have the following system. x1 plus x2 equals 0, x2 plus x3 equals 1, x1 plus x3 equals 2. There are several ways you can solve the system of equations. You might have learned that you first solve it for x1, then replace x1 in these equations, then you solve for x2, then you solve for x3 recursively, and then to get x2 you put in the values that you got for x3 and x2 and x1. Alternatively, you might have learned that you can so show this system of equations in matrix form. So you can write ax is equal to b. In this case, a will be equal to the following matrix. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. x is equal to x1, x2, x3. And b is equal to 0, 1, 2. Okay? Then what you can do is, you can multiply from the left the inverse of matrix A, on both sides, and you will get x on the left hand side and a inverse times b on the right hand side and you solve the system of equations. Another way to solve it is Gaussian elimination, uh, but there are two reasons why you might prefer using Kramer's rule. The first reason is you might only be interested in x2. All these methods would require you to essentially solve for x1, x2, and x3. But if you're only interested in x2, you cannot do so. Kramer's rule allows you to do so. Secondly, you might find it quite complicated to invert a matrix, especially if you have a 10 by 10 case. Kramer's rule just states that you can get all of these x's one at a time by the ratio of two determinants or determinants of two matrices. In particular, the formula says xi is equal to the determinant of ai over the determinant of a. ai is the matrix of a where the ith column is replaced by the b vector. So if you want x2 we take this matrix, but it replace the second column by this B vector. So let us get x1, x2, and x3 this way. Let's start with x1. For x1, we first need to get a1. So the term of a1 is equal to 0, 1, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. Determinant of this matrix. Now, calculating this determinant quickly, we get 0, 2, and 0, so 2, and this one is 1, 0, and 0, minus 1 equals 1. Okay? Now, the next thing we need is a determinant of A, right? Because we have ai over a. So this determinant here is simply 1 plus 1 and this the other diagonals are 0 so it's just 2. And we can get x1 is equal to 1 over 2 which was equal to a1, determinant of A1, over determinant of A. Okay, let's repeat that with x2. So for x2, we need to replace the second column of the A matrix with this vector. So we have 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 1. 
So to calculate this determinant, we have 1, 0, 0, minus 0, 0, 2, which is equal to minus 1. And we've calculated the same way, x2 is equal to minus 1 half, which is equal to the determinant of a2 over the determinant of a. And lastly, for x3, we replace the third column by this p vector, and we get 101, 110, 0, 1, 2. And calculating the determinant is 2 plus 1 plus 0 is 3 minus 0, 0, 0. So just 3. And we get our x3, which is equal to 3 halves, which is equal to the determinant of a3 over the determinant of a. Let's cross check. So x1 is 1 half. So 1 half plus minus 1 half is 0. Minus 1 half plus 3 halves is 1. 1 half plus 3 halves is equal to 2. So we solve the system of equations correctly. Thank you for watching.